You're listening to Impact, a Temple University podcast about service, sacrifice, and Temple Made. All right, folks, my name is Christy Furiosi, and you are listening to the Impact Podcast. Here I am with... My name is Meher Ghazarian. Fantastic. And Meher, what, what year are you at Temple? So this is my second semester, actually, uh, but I'm a transfer student from Montgomery County Community College. Fantastic. What are you studying at Temple? I'm majoring in mathematics and computer science with minor in physics. What got you there to all of this hardcore STEM programs? Uh, Yeah, so I really like just engineering and just sciences in general, except chemistry. Sorry, sorry, (laughs) chemistry, guys, but... um, yeah, and uh, originally I was majoring in physics. This was back in Armenia before I moved to the United States in 2016. Mm-hmm. But then I just thought about the fact that, well, if I do physics, I'm only going to be doing physics my whole life, and I just want to do, like, interdisciplinary stuff or be able to kind of um, hop around in different jobs. Like, I don't want to just be stuck to one thing for mm-hmm. the rest of my life. Pigeonholed into something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I decided to switch to computer science in Montco uh, because I thought, well, with computer science, it's it's something that's needed pretty much everywhere. So I can kind of use this in physics or in something else. Um, then when I transferred to Temple, actually, one of the reasons why I chose Temple, because they had the mathematics and computer science combined major. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a lot of schools o- offered that. Um, and... Yeah, just after taking another physics class, I was like, yeah, but I still miss physics. So I just decided to kind of add it. Wow. You have, the, you have a very daunting program for folks who aren't in the STEM field. It might seem that way. I feel like just college life is daunting no mm-hmm. matter, no matter uh, what, what program yeah, you're in. No, no matter what program are you into. Um, it's just that that's one thing I love. And hardest subjects can be easy for me if I like them and vice versa. So, um, yeah, I guess just do what you love. You're here. And so you're also a member of the military. Can you talk about what what branch you're in, what your MOS is and how you kind of how you kind of got there? Yeah. So I joined the military in March of 2021. Um, I joined as a enlisted cavalry scout. Mm -hmm. And I served in Bravo Troop 2nd 104th for about a year. Um, right now, I'm in the Officer Candidate School in 166th Regional Training Institute. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so that's my military career. Not mm-hmm. not too long for now. We'll mm-hmm. see. Maybe I'll do whole, the whole 20 years. Or What made you decide to join and raise your right hand? Yeah, so... I moved to the United States in 2016, and I moved from Armenia. Mm-hmm. And just seeing the differences in life. So my mother, actually, let me go back a little bit. My mother, she was a religious refugee when we came here. Wow. Um, and, yeah, but it, it was kind of always a dream to come to the United States, the American mm-hmm. dream and whatnot. And uh, just, just seeing the differences in life and how everything everything is in the United States, mm-hmm. um, it, it really made me appreciate everything here. And I just felt like, well, I'm sort of in a position where I'm getting all these opportunities out of nowhere when I was 18 years old. And mm-hmm. I just kind of felt like I, I got to do something for the community and just to give it back. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, probably serving in the military will be the best way to do it. And oh. then we'll go from there. You're here. And how long is OCS for for now? How long do you have in the officer candidate school? So the traditional National Guard officer candidate school program is generally from 14 to 18 months. So it's basically two annual trainings and one year of drilling in the, in the OCS unit. Mm-hmm. So I have already drilled twice with my OCS unit, and if everything goes right, hopefully I'll graduate next August. Wow. And so how, is, how does OCS drill compare to your, your cavalry drill or your drill at your former unit? Yeah, so when you're in your unit, unless there is something major going on, like the National Training Center event last year, generally it's 
it's pretty chill. We have some work that we got to do. Um, in, in a cab unit, it's mostly probably motor pool stuff, mm -hmm. just PMCSing vehicles. <laughs> motor pool Monday. Yeah. That was my... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going to Fort Indiana cab town and doing some training, mm -hmm. marksmanship and whatnot. In the OCS, it's a little bit different. It's definitely way more intense. It's mm -hmm. kind of back to red face basic training kind of wow. feel to it. Mm -hmm. Except there's a lot of op orders and <laughs> <laughs> writing and yeah. powerpoints and yeah, pretty much. Wow. So yeah, it's it's very similar to basic training, except it's more towards the um, organizational part of the army. That's that's kind of what you're learning mostly. Mm -hmm. There's still land nav and all the other things, but it will not compare to say the red diamond at mm -hmm. um, Fort Benning land navigation. Mm -hmm. The emphasis is definitely more on the organizational part of the army. And wow. So you're doing, you know, you're doing National Guard OCS. You are in a very rigor rigorous academic program at Temple. And you're also working on a special project outside of the classroom. Can you talk a little bit about that and introduce, you know, what you're doing outside of, outside of the classroom? So let's, let's start talking about failures, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> It's it's been pretty hard uh, finding an internship, and let's say even if I found it, there's a lot of things going going on in my life that probably doing an internship might not even be the best idea, mm -hmm. just um, because of the time management and whatnot. So I thought, well, I really want to use my use use the education that I'm getting for practical applications mm -hmm. because it's. It, it's it's cool when you're learning all this interesting things in science and engineering and computer science, but um, it's even more fun when you're actually applying uh, applying all this knowledge and just making something interesting. Seeing something, seeing yeah. something tan tangible from yeah, it. exactly. That's kind of where your education sort of materializes in a way. And I decided, well. Maybe I'll just make a UAV. <laughs> <laughs> and for the folks listening, what is, what is a UAV for the folks who don't know? So UAV stands for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. Which sounds very, very yeah. technologically challenging. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just kind of thought to myself, well, why not make something that's hard? Like It's, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be somewhat impressive for possible employment in the future. Maybe not, but at least I'll I'll do something interesting, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, for for about two months, me and my close friend, um, shout out to Salvador Sparacha, future uh, electrical engineering student at Temple. Awesome. Yeah, um, we just kind of started to work together uh, on this project. I asked him for help. Uh, I, I I told him, well, look, I have this idea. Maybe we can make this and. At first, when we kind of dived into it, it was kind of intimidating how, how many moving parts there must be. Mm -hmm. But I kind of had this attitude like, well, I'll either do like something that's really good or nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, for, for about two months, we started to learn how, how we can make this thing. We discovered that there are already some aerodynamic kits available on the internet um, for hobbyists mm -hmm. and there's actually a big community of people on the internet who are buying different parts and making their own UAVs and whatnot wow. except the difference for us was obviously we cannot make the plane body because that's that's very difficult that's mm -hmm. a lot of aerodynamics and disciplines that mm -hmm. neither I nor my friend has ever touched mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, the biggest difference for us was that we were actually going to design our own electronics and actually program all the controls and um, yeah, basically make our own flight controller module wow. from commercially available microprocessors, mostly from Adafruit, mm -hmm. um, as well as the communication and, and basically everything electronics and, and code. Mm -hmm. What has been, you know, with this, with the whole build and the whole planning and, and processes, what has been one of the biggest challenges in building this UAV? 
So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, actually, this might sound funny, but it's one thing when you're making a plane, mm -hmm. when you're building it, and it's a totally different thing when you're flying it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is, neither of us have ever f um, tried to fly a remote control plane mm -hmm. or anything of that sort. I mean, here and there I did fly a couple of drones, but that's totally different from, um, from a winged UAV. Um, it's... Yeah, we crashed a couple of <laughs> couple of drones, mm -hmm. um, and and the thing is, it was especially challenging because we're trying to experiment with the electronics and the major components, figuring out what would be the right motor, what would be the right rotor to use, mm -hmm. and all the other parts, and we don't even know how to fly. Wow! So it's like we're both learning how to fly, and we're both l learning how to how to actually design and implement mm -hmm. um, the electronics part of it. And what has been the most rewarding aspect of this this process of building this? Definitely the first flight when, mm -hmm. yeah, we were able to actually successfully launch it and mm -hmm. keep it in the air for, um, for a couple seconds and just do some maneuvers and land it. Yeah, we were... We were screaming out of happiness wow. pretty much. Wow, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. Huge, huge accomplishment. Huge accomplishment. Again, you know, considering the fact that you are, you know, in the program that you're in, doing doing National Guard and, and all of the other things, accomplishing this is a huge feat for, for a student. So Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it's that. very, very, very successful. So, you know, with that, with with. What is kind of the, you know, we talked about y using this as a practical application for a career or or getting landing a job. You know, what, what else do you kind of want to get out of this UAV project? So I'm very much interested in defense technology. Mm -hmm. um, people generally feel all sorts of different way about defense industry in general. Mm -hmm. But one thing for sure is that the defense industry and the military has done so much research and so many advancements that are um, changing our lives. And they don't just have military applications, but they will translate into the civilian life as well. Like one of the things that were mind blowing to me is that uh, the microwaves were actually um, a military invention. It was just an accident. Really? Yeah. So the scientist who invented the microwave was actually he was working on a microwave wavelength radars. And they just accidentally noticed that things that contain water actually heat up near those radars. And that's how the microwave came about. You know, a lot of things that we have in, in present day, I don't conceptualize how they were invented, who created them, or, mm -hmm. or any of that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of mind-blowing. We talked a little bit too about you know with with UAVs and the cost of making them and, and the the sourcing of the the material it can be very very outrageously expensive so you know there is a, a maybe a pocket for developing these these technologies for you know on with with good quality but for for less expenses right um, yeah I definitely maxed out my Amazon card <laughs> 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 but. Um, yeah, that was actually another thing that was interesting. You can definitely make military-grade technology for a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that was kind of surprising, seeing that certain things can really have, I guess, a very high markup in the, in the defense industry mm -hmm. for maybe for a good reason, maybe, maybe not. Wow, do but I know that. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's. Well, if if we're going back and saying, well, yeah, maybe twenty years ago, they may it made sense that something that could have cost, say, two or three thousand dollar was thirty thousand dollar because, the technology was still new and experimental mm -hmm. and very expensive, but when, when it's kind of not changing for 20 years, but all the components and the technology becomes way more accessible, way cheaper. I guess it's very important that 
at least the price or um, the edge of the product kind of adjusts mm -hmm. to that makes sense to the economics or the technological advancements. Mm -hmm. it makes total sense. Wow, I'm I'm still kind of boggled just by the just the conception of of taking on this this feat. So, you know, looking at the you know looking at your whole temple experience, how and you know. We, we like to say, you know, temple made and military made. But what do what do those two things mean to you? You know, being both both a temple soon, you know, you will be a temple graduate and you will be temple made. And then you're also military made. And how do you think that'll catapult you into future careers? I guess that's something I have to see. It's yet <laughs> I don't to know come, what right? the future holds. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, it's been very, very good experience on both parts, actually. And. Um, and I appreciate every part of it, both the military and being a, being able to study at Temple. And um, yeah, it's it's sort of like they both kind of complement to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I did the military just um, for my own personal reasons. It ended up helping me to pay for my tuition, and mm -hmm. then my education helped me for my um, career advancement. So, yeah, it's like they both are kind of amplifying each other. And it's interesting because a lot of folks don't know how students balance both. And, and, you know, when we hear these stories of students who are doing that and more, it's really inspiring to some folks who are kind of on that fence. Yeah, there's always speed bumps. Uh, there's always difficulties. Uh, yeah, I definitely had my own problems. And it, it's definitely not like everything is always going smooth. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's one thing I want everybody to know. I mean, things can appear easy and nice at times, but uh, yeah, it's not like that. A lot of the times we all have our own problems. Some people speak about them, some people don't. And it also takes some amount of luck to to get successful at something too. It's it's not always that yeah you can have the talent or you can you can do hard work and just be successful at something no yeah the, definitely luck play plays a big part in everything as well and i know because i had my fair share of bad luck mm -hmm. so yeah i guess just i i really like the um, motto of temple that perseverance conquers mm -hmm. wow yeah you got to yeah, if, if you want to achieve something, you definitely got to keep going because sometimes it might be a matter of, it could be just a matter of luck. Maybe everything else, all the other variables are perfect and you're doing everything as you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. You just got to be a little bit stubborn to, to get successful because mm -hmm. some things you just cannot control. Got to stick to it. Yep, got to stick to it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. Do you have any final things you want to say well i want to wish everybody good luck on the finals <laughs> you're here it is final season <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's the final season thank you for taking your time to come speak with us today thank you so much it's been a pleasure for more information on military affiliated students at temple visit veterans.temple.edu